Hello friends, welcome back to Endo Tales from Life. In this episode, I'll be sharing a lot of exciting clinical tips and tricks for the management of necrotic teeth with open epix. And we'll also discuss an interesting case with a similar situation. So, this patient was a 15 year old boy who reported to me with a necrotic left maxillary central incisor 2 1 and when we took a radiograph, we found that there is a big periapical lesion and the tooth is immature, that is, it had an open apex. So, an apexification is planned. So, generally, when you see a tooth with an immature apex, a conventional or traditional obturation is not going to be enough as we need to promote an apical barrier, which is called as apexification. So, a bioceramic based apexification procedure was planned. The tooth was isolated and access was initiated through the defect and after we initiated access we could, we could see a lot of pus discharge. So it's a misconception that if there is pus it is not an ideal candidate for a single visit end tooth. So under isolation when we perform the cleaning and uh, shaping procedure, irrigation and allow some time after 10 to 15 minutes you can see that the pus discharge then turns to a uh, serious uh, exudate. And after 5 to 10 minutes, almost 15 to 20 minutes later, we can see that the canal can be completely dried. So, the only contraindication for obturation is when you cannot dry a canal. And say hence, since we can achieve dry canal in this situation, I'm going to perform a single visit endo and in fact, a single step apexification here. So, in year back, I used to use a, a lot of one fill uh, MTA, which is a bioceramic base sealer. And off late, I moved to Sarasi as it has a much better flow, and uh, the setting, the working time is much improved with Sarasi from Metabiomet compared to one fill. But this particular case was done with a one fill calcium silicate based sealer. So, this particular case, I did not perform an apical barrier. So, this T case was completely obturated with the bioceramic sealer. So I just measured the working length and made sure I had a stopper to my tip, applicator tip and directly inject the bioceramic sealer into the canal. That is my entire obturation technique. And you can see that there is a lot of sealer extrusion which is definitely not good. So though we know that the sealer extrusion especially in the anterior region may not cause problem endodontics by itself has to be restricted within the apex and there is uh, no material that can be extruded beyond the apex so this was not incidental this was not uh, intentionally done but we still had a lot of sealer extrusion so i follow i wanted to follow up this case but the patient was completely asymptomatic after a week so we planned for a minimal intervention restorative plan as this tooth had only a, a small fracture so I didn't want to give a crown and instead we prepared a very conservative veneer preparation for a porcelain laminate veneer. Sage selection was done, communicated with the lab. And this is the final processed uh, Emax or lithium disilicate veneer, which was etched with hydrofluoric acid, followed by application of a saline coupling agent. And this was one year back and now I don't use uh, hydrofluoric acid separately and a saline separately since we have monobond H in prime which can both H and uh, silenate uh, lithium disilicate in one step that is what I use right now. So this was the immediate post-op and we can see that this patient did not have any proclination and hence this tooth was restored just with a single tooth veneer with a very minimal preparation and the preparation was restricted to enamel which is highly a favorable factor for an outcome of ceramic veneer and this patient I followed up after one year and you can see that uh, the sealer extrusion didn't cause any problem the lesion is completely healed and there is evidence of calcific barrier formed and we can see the apexification procedure is successful and you can see that I have performed a very micro axis here so the pulp horn was cleaned with the traditional scalar tip for cleaning the pulp chamber and a flowable composite was later used for filling the pulp on uh, which is critical 
when you perform these micro access. So this is the immediate obturation and one year recall. And this is the clinical photograph of the veneer after one year. You can see beautifully integrated veneer into one. That's the beauty of lithium disilicate. They are very gingival friendly and highly aesthetic. So there are two take home messages I wanted to convey through this video. Number one is a lot of people think it is very good to push bioceramic or calcium hydroxide into a lesion but it is not recommended so maybe in few cases we may get away like how I did in this case but when the sealer can extrude and if there is a nerve or any other critical anatomy where apical to it it can cause some serious problems and bioceramic sealers can also cause permanent paresthesia so we need to be aware so uh, from then on I never you I never obturate or never perform apexification procedure just with a sealer because it's very difficult to control a sealer just within the apex so we perform a hard barrier in the apex a 4 to 6 mm of apical barrier following which we can fill the rest of the canal in one or two of the ways that we are going to discuss so the choice of material here will be MTA or bioceramic. We'll first discuss about MTA and then go to bioceramic. So there are different brands of MTA. The brand actually doesn't matter. So I'm going to tell you a very simple one-step apexification technique with MTA. So generally we think that MTA has a long sitting time and hence apexification has to be done in two visit. But with a simple tip, uh, you can easily do a single step apexification even with MTA. So let us see how to handle MTA first. So in this demonstration, I'm going to show you an MTA from Mark. And all that you need is a mixing pad spatula and an amalgam carrier is more than enough to carry the MTA into the canal. We don't need any MTA carriers. So this is how we mix MTA. So here I'm going to take two scoops of MTA. You can dispense as much as you want as per your need it's not that you always need to take two scoops even one scoop is going to be sufficient if your need is very minimal and there is no exact powder liquid ratio but uh, according to the manufacturer here you can see a two drop I mean two scoops of powder and one drop of liquid generally will give you a nice consistency so if you're going to just take one scoop you need to add less of the liquid provided by the manufacturer so we perform the mixing and I need to get a nice sandy consistency that is packable that can be easily handled. I don't want to have a very thin mix. So after mixing I find the mix to be a little thin. So I will add a little more powder to make the mix easy to handle. Just a little more powder is added. So it has, we have uh, got a nice consistency that can be easily condensed or packed. And to carry this MTA into the canal, I will tell you a very simple technique. Just the regular conventional amalgam carrier that we all have in our practice is more than enough. So load it in the amalgam carrier and with one increment you can see the amount of MTA, the ball of MTA that can be dispensed in the pulp chamber. So the whole idea is to just place the MTA first in the pulp chamber. I generally carry two small balls like this with the help of what I can dispense with an amalgam carrier. I first place the MTA in the pulp chamber. And gently just push the MTA below the CEJ with the help of my applicator tip. That's it. And after that, later, I'll tell you how to condense the MTA safely and effectively with working length control. So the first technique that I follow is always using the backfill gun or the injectable gutter pressure. So what I always do is I pre-fit a plugger with a stopper 2 to 3 millimeters short of my working length and place the MTA with the, the same technique that I just showed you two balls of MTA into the pulp chamber and gently condense it below the CEJ 
we inject a little of gutta percha the injectable gutta percha even that you can see that i'm just injecting in the pulp chamber now i have my pre-fitted plugger with which i will gently push the gp down so i shouldn't give excessive pressure this GP will nicely take my MTA exactly to the apex. When you are in doubt, you can repeat your radiographs to see if you are pushing the MTA at the right working length. So you can see here, just with a little of injected GP and condensing with the help of a plugger, I have carried enough MTA as a barrier at the apex and we also have a nice solid GP which has become hard now. And over this, I can just fill the rest of the canal with injectable GP again after placing little more bioceramic sealer and condense it passively. So this is a very easy technique for me, very predictable technique for me. This is how I do my apexification single step even with MTA. So another case you can see an open apex here. So you can see the same technique I have placed MTA following which I inject the GP, condense it to whatever length I want and in this case since I wanted post space, I haven't filled the coronal space with that. We have done a post space and you can see the follow up, the lesions are healing. So for people who ask me what can I do when I don't have a backfill gun, I will tell you another simple easy technique which is a custom made or tailor made gatapacha technique which is also popularly known as the roll cone technique. So what you are supposed to do is use some flame torch and roll 3 to 5 GPs depending on the size of the canal together just heat it gently and then roll them together with your finger to get a bigger GP and I gently mold the GP with my finger and when it's in the moldable state I place it in the canal to the desired length that I want. So generally I pre-fit this custom made GP 3 to 4 mm short of the apex so that this GP can be used for condensing the MTA which is a very easy technique. So you can see here the GP has been made to fit 3 to 4 mm short of the apex. Now I can place this MTA in the same way that I showed with an amalgam carrier, two balls of MTA, place it and now we can use the same cone and we know that this cone cannot be pushed beyond that because we have customized the cone in such a way it has a good fit at that point. So it's not going to go beyond, it cannot push the MTA beyond the apex as well. So we use the same technique, place the MTA and then put the custom made cone in to the desired working length which is already predetermined and you see this beautifully condensed MTA at the apex without the fear of extrusion and following that you can use the same GP coat it with little more sealer and share it and here is your final obturation. So uh, MTA people have moved slowly moving from MTA to bioceramics basically bioceramics are an improvised version of MTA with less heavy metals and uh, so biodentin is an easy option it's much easier to handle but I personally don't use biodentin because the radio opacity of biodentin is still very less. So which doesn't matter for clinical success. It's an excellent material but I personally would feel happy to see a nice radio opaque obturating material so that I can easily identify in my follow up radiographs. So the other option is the bioceramic putty which is a high viscosity bioceramic sealer which comes in a putty like consistency which can be used for the same purpose and it's not yet available in India so I still stick to MTA maybe when the bioceramic putty is available in India we can use that which is much easier to handle. Now the take home message number two is how you restore a tooth in the anterior region. We need to aware that not all endodontically treated teeth require crowns especially anteriors do not require crown if there is no loss of tooth structure. So when there is loss, when there is no loss of tooth structure, just for discoloration, you can simply do non-vital bleaching or walking bleach. So in one of our uh, earlier videos, we have clearly mentioned the steps involved in walking bleach. And 
even when there's a small fracture again we don't give a crown or a veneer we just do the non-vital bleaching followed by a simple restoration of the defect so only when the defect size is increased and uh, if you want a much durable long lasting aesthetics for restoring this defect even here we are not going to go for a crown as in this case we just did a veneer and this is the one year follow up that is how you need to judiciously select a post endodontic restoration so thank you for watching this video we'll be coming up with more such videos with a lot of interesting different clinical scenarios and follow-ups and for people who want to learn more of endo you're more welcome to our endo 360 workshop which will cover almost every perspective of endodontics starting from access anesthesia isolation till biomimetic veneers and onlays for restoring endodontically treated tooth also, you can follow our work in any of my social media platforms. Thank you again.